Friends, today I am presenting the difference between intracellular action potential and compound action potential recorded from a mixed nerve. This is in reference to the uh, question number four of paper two of physiology uh, conducted by Dr. YSR University of Health Sciences on 24-1-2023. Hope this would cover up the issue regarding the differences as well as the question uh, before us. The question is, which one of the following is not true about compound action potential in a mixed nerve? The options are A. Obeys all or none law. B. First peak belongs to slowest conducting fibers. C. Shows different peaks. D. First peak belongs to first conducting fibers. There in my YouTube presentation on the paper two discussion, two options are correct, A and B. So therefore, let us understand the basics of the compound action potential. Uh, this is the basis for recording the extracellular potentials. We have a number of extracellular potentials recorded, especially the EEG, ECG, EMG, and all these things are extracellular potentials. These extracellular potentials uh, are recordings of placing on the surface of the excitable membrane. Here, the electrode is placed on the surface of the excitable membrane, yeah, as in case of EEG, the scalp, or heart, the various leads, or EMG on the motor unit points, or wherever. So now, the, what happens, there is, there is what is called a dipole. Dipole is a structure of two separate charges held by a very small distance, or infinitesimally small distance. This is dipole. This is a membrane. On the other side of the inside is negative and outside is positive here. The membrane membrane potential is minus 70 millivolts and outside is positive in reference to these things. So that means the two charges are separated by a very small distance is a dipole. And when we stimulate this externally, the, the polarity of this dipole changes. And this polarity of the dipole changes and moves in the volume conductor. Entire body, body tissue is the volume conductor and the movement of the volume conductor and these are the placement of the electrodes. The movement of the wave of depolarization, this what is circled in the, what is red circled here, this movement of this wave of depolarization, you can just see that this has become positive here. And uh, this, this is moving towards, uh, and this one is an anode and another is a cathode of the recording electrode. As it moves towards anode, it builds, it deflects upwards. As it moves, comes to the center point, it becomes neutral or isoelectric. So there is no change, it does not detect any change. These two electrodes do not think, detect any uh, electrical difference. Then as goes goes nearer to the cathode, so it will go in the reverse direction. That is, this is called a biphasic bi potential. Uh, most of us, because when we are recording, we have both monophasic and biphasic potentials. But in an experimental situation like recording extracellular potential from compound action potential, what we do is suppose if we crush this end, so then we will have only the unipolar potential or mon monophasic potential. Okay, this is the basis. Uh, precisely, it is the moment of a dipole in a conductor. This is recorded by a surface electrode. Going further, it is one of the, uh, I've taken it from Bernard Karch's textbook on the nerve, muscle, and synapse. To remind you, Dr. Bernard Card won Nobel Prize for his quantum release of acetylcholine. Okay, so now what happens here, this is the setup here for recording the compound action potential from a sciatic nerve. This is the 
this is the recording setup. So the one side, this is the sciatic nerve. And this sciatic nerve contains a number of uh, multiple fibers, uh, different type of fibers, uh, uh, A, B, C, and uh, the fast conducting, slow conducting, mild, high, thickly myelinated, thinly myelinated, so on, and unmyelinated fibers. And this nerve, this is the stimulating electrode, and this is the recording electrode. The recording electrode is connected to a recording device. Uh, at that time, when Bernard Katz did it, it was the cathode ray oscilloscope. Now we have computers wherein we convert it, we digitize these signals, these analog signals, and uh, these digitized signals are stored in the computer as a digital, digital waves. Anyway, so whatever may be the uh, recording device, uh, this is going to the recording electrodes and to the recording device. Now, in this beautiful experiment by Bernard Cards, you can just see that in this B, when a stimulus is given, this is a very, he gave a very small stimulus strength. So that means, uh, let us, let us say, for example, one volt, I'm giving arbitrarily one volt, because I don't know exactly here in this uh, um, uh, legend, he has not mentioned about that. Just for understanding purpose, suppose at one volt, there was no change change here. At a 2 volt also there is no change because it still remains straight line. At a 3 volt you can just see that the peak is appearing. These are the low threshold fibers who are excited in the beginning. Okay. As he increased the strength of stimulus maybe 4 or 5 or 10 so then what happens? The, the peak was increased. This is due to the recruitment of the newer fibers because of the increased strength of stimulation. Then he increased it further. It, the, the amplitude of this potential increased. And he increased it still further. Maybe it, it's 10, 10 volts here or maybe it is 50 volts there. So then the amplitude did not increase. So thus, in a mixed nerve like this, there is a graded response. That means there is no all or none response. It's a graded response. As you keep increasing the strength of stimulus, the, the waves appear, newer fibers are recruited. So there are two explanations for this. One, because it contains a different set of fibers with a different thresholds. The fast and thick fibers are low threshold. Thinner, thin, thinly myelinated fibers have little higher and unmyelinated fiber fibers are high threshold. So that means as you are increasing the uh, thick, thin and uh, the unmyelinated fibers are recruited. That's one point. Then another thing. So look here, you have placed a, a stimulating electrode here on one surface. And the bottom, the, because this is a nerve, cylindrical nerve, and here it, the, the, whatever the electro, electrotonic potential is happening here, whatever the change is happening here, they are only limited to the nearer uh, nerve fibers. The further nerve fibers, that means those are on this side, they are not uh, receiving that, uh, that much amount of stimulus. That is another reason why uh, there is a a change or increased graded response. So to avoid that, you can have a ring electrode. So that means I used to surround the entire entire fiber by a ring electrode. Then you can recruit, but still then the core fibers are again uh, missing that um, particular electrotonic charge. So there are two aspects. The, you have uh, uh, the problems with the stimulus, uh, stimulating electrodes. The number two is because it contains a different set of fibers who can be stimulated with the different voltages or they have a different thresholds. And the amplitude of this potential is depending, depending upon the, the number of fibers, number of nerve fibers located in that nerve. Because if it is only a thin nerve, you will, you will have a very small amplitude. The overall amplitude of these excellent potentials recorded extracellularly will be ranging between one to three millivolts. Or if there are only fewer fibers, it may be even 0.5 or even uh, 0.25 millivolts.
Okay, if you are considering in case of the intracellular potential, wherein the the potential reversal of the potential is uh, uh, the from minus seventy millivolts, it reaches up to uh, uh, plus thirty millivolts, maybe hundred millivolts uh, is the amplitude of the intracellular excess potential. In case of intracellular excess potential, once the threshold stimulus is given, it is giving the alarm and response. So to make it clear, this the compound action potential does not give the alarm response, and uh, it will be producing the graded response because it contains a different set of nerve fibers. Now moving on to the uh, some of the beautiful experiments done here. Uh, in this experiment, you can just see that uh, uh, the increasing the strength of stimulation, how the different fibers are being recorded. So in the top, you have a very low voltage, very low voltage. So you get a small peak of small excess potential, and this is a alpha peak. So now I will I will explain at the end one peak. So then, as they increase the strength of stimulation, because you just see the strength 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 of stimulation here, it is increased. So now this a alpha also the more number have been recruited and the second peak started appearing that is another peak then they increased it further the stimulus strength is increased further the a is almost it also increased and now the beta or the second peak is also increased you just see this peak and this peak and another peak appears the gamma peak so now when you stimulated it still further, that means a greater, greater. In that case, we get one peak, second peak. The one, this peak has already reached the maximum here. It is as compared to this, and uh, this is a second peak, and this is a third peak. Third peak is small, and it has become bigger, and a fourth peak, a delta, a delta has come up here, and then followed by a long. After long latency, there's one more peak, a C, C wave. So that means this compound action potential recorded by, uh, these are the these are the Erlinger and Gasser uh, recordings of the compound action potential. So you wherein you have a A peak, B peak, and a C peak. The B peak corresponds with the A delta fibers. B peak is concerned with the... Uh, Preganglionic autonomic fibers. Wherever there are preganglionic autonomic fibers, we get a B peak. In case of a sciatic nerve, you may not get those B, B preganglionic autonomic fibers. So in that case, you have the A delta fibers. So both are having a equal um, the uh, the conduction velocity and precisely the same diameter. So now we have A B C peaks. A peaks are divided into the fast conducting alpha, the, the next next is beta, the next uh, slower is uh, gamma, next slower is delta, and uh, the slowest is the C fiber. Uh, hope the whatever the explanations I gave here would, would clarify that the extracellular potential uh, recorded in a compound action potential of a mixed nerve have a graded response depending upon the number of nerve fibers recruited. The second, it has a different peaks. The fast peaks appear first. The fast are the thickly myelinated fibers. They are uh, easily stimulated. They are, that is the first peak. And the last peak is the unmyelinated fiber. Now, coming back to the uh, differences between the intracellular potential and extracellular potential, you can just see that the methods used is microelectrodes introduced in the cell or in the exon. You have to impale the electrodes, the microelectrodes, into the exon to record the potential. First, you record the resting potential. After that, you stimulate, you get the spike. In case of uh, uh, extracellular potential, it is the surface electrodes. The recording electrodes are placed on the surface. Yeah, it's, it happens in case of the EEG, ECG, EMG, or the EMG, or whatever. Okay, the stimulation, again, same, the voltage or current as, as it's desired. 
Again, there are two different parameters in the voltage and current, the strength duration curve. You can uh, refer to the strength duration curves. Then recording device is the same. So here, CRO, the arc cathode ray oscilloscope, previously, nowadays with computer with a A to B converter. Uh, same thing here. What is recorded? It is the reversal of a membrane potential of the magnitude of 100 millivolts is recorded in case of intracellular voltage. The range is, this is because you have a minus 70 as a resting potential, plus 30 is the peak potential. So you add up these, it's around 100 millivolts or more. In case of um, extra comp compound excitement potential, it is the wave of depolarization produced on the surface of the membrane and that would produce the potential and these potentials are sum, summed up are summed up and that is recorded if it is only one fiber that is different altogether but it's not a, a single fiber here now sub threshold stimulation produces electrotonic potential here because you can record the electrotonic potential because it does not reach the the threshold point and it, it again fades off or it, it again exponentially, exponentially decays. In case there is no response here, you saw that or no response because the small changes are not detected. The, the changes are so less, uh, maybe um, in microvolts or even less than microvolts. So then uh, increasing strength of stimulation produces all or none response at a threshold. It produces all or none response at a threshold voltage or current. And after that, there is no change. It is maximum. It is 100 millivolts means 100 millivolts. Here, there it produces a graded response as I have shown due to the recruitment of newer fibers. I give another explanation also. You think about it, you wonder about it. Then response pattern is a single peak. Here, you have a multiple peaks depending upon the type of fibers involved the number of fibers, the type of fibers that make, so that means the fast fibers, the slow fibers, and the slowest fibers. So A, B, C. So here I have divided A into alpha, beta, gamma, delta, B, and the C fibers. A delta is equal to B. Then magnitude of the potential, just for your information, it is on an average 100 millivolt. Ranges between minus 90 to 130, depending upon the resting membrane potential and the peak potential. In case of uh, the compound excitement potential, this is between 0.5 to 3 millivolts. So in ECG, we get the, because of the synchronized activity, synchronized activity uh, of the cardiac muscle, you get the one millivolt peak. R wave peak is about one millivolt. So that is the ventricular muscle mass is uh, large. In case of the, EEG, you will get in microvolts, 0.1. So that is why even I have made 0.5 to uh, 3 millivolts considering the uh, mixed uh, nerve. But in case of other extracellular potential, it may be ranging between uh, uh, microvolts to millivolts. Okay, these are the differences uh, one, one may think about. Coming back to the question, now hope it is clear that which one of the following is not a true about compound excitement potential in a mixed nerve. It's very clearly written in a mixed nerve. So first thing is it does not obey the uh, all or none law. This, this response is true. The second thing is first peak belongs to slowest conducting fiber. No, the last peak belongs to the slowest conducting fibers. So the different peaks, that is true. So first peak belongs to the fast conducting fibers as I have shown. So the response is here, if you are, because it's a negative negative question, is not a true, is not a true means that this is not a true. And uh, answer A is not a true. That is, it does not obey the all or none law. Here it is mentioned obeys all or none law because it's a graded response. Then uh, B is a first peak because first peak belongs to fast conducting fibers. These are the, uh, uh, <coughs> the, uh, explanations for these uh, references. Uh, hope uh, these explanations will be 
uh, helpful to you all and I have also added up the intracellular and extracellular potential. One more thing I want to I want to mention uh, uh, here. Suppose if I have recorded an action potential from a single nerve, single nerve, as uh, Professor Painter used to do the vagus nerves and the single nerve fiber. If I am recording action potential from a single nerve fiber extracellularly by pressing the hook electrodes or something like that, so then different options coming up because the potentials are very small in microvolts. The second, the potentials, because it is only one, if you stimulate a particular strength, it will produce a microvolt. This a strength that produces a response will produce a maximum response. That's the threshold, single nerve, not a mixed nerve. Okay, with this thing I end up. Thank you very much. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Leave comments in the box. Mention any topic or questions to be discussed.